So longtime viewers know about the Goya Piranha Launcher combo. I played this in Mean Streets, and then I played it again in Ungoro, and we're playing it again in Knights of the Frozen Throne. Because Piranha Launcher and Madame Goya are dope. If it's not obvious, you play Piranha Launcher on 5, and it guarantees that you have a minion to shuffle with Goya the next turn. So generally, we just have some big things to pull. New additions from this expansion are Lich King, which is probably pretty self-explanatory, and Abominable Bowman. He has some really nice high rolls in the deck with Savannah High Main, Swamp King Dread, but he also functions with the Build-A-Beast minions from Rexar, and even getting like Misha and Huffer, or even the uh, Cat in the Hat is pretty damn good. And sometimes getting a Charging Hound is pretty good too. I think Stormwind Champion is actually pretty good in this deck. We've got Double Unleash the Hounds, we've got Hyenas from High Main, we've got One Ones from the Piranha Launcher, there's a lot of things to buff. And even buffing up stuff like if you hit it with Barnes, you get a 4-5 into 1-1 instead of a 3-4 into 1-1. It's pretty decent. I think Stormwind Champion is okay in this deck. It's definitely possible that he's just not as good as Primordial Drake or Savannah High Main, though. Another new addition from Knights of the Frozen Throne is Stitch Tracker. It's a really bad hit off Barnes, it's a bad hit off Goya, but it also helps find Barnes and it helps find Goya. So I think overall it probably makes the deck more consistent. And it's also really good with Galaka Crawler. And it turns out that Galaka Crawler is probably just like the best card in the game right now. Because all the Tempo Rogues are playing South Sea Captains. They're of course playing Patches and Swash Burglar. They've got Deckhands and some of them even play Naga Corsair. Pirate Warrior is still a thing for some reason. Aggro Druid is still a thing for some reason. Token Shaman is a thing and they play three Pirates. Other Hunters play Pirates. Some of them even play South Sea Captain. I haven't run into Zoo, but I'm sure Zoo plays Pirates. So basically, I think pretty much every non Keliseth deck on ladder should have at least one copy of Galaka Crawler right now. The card is just so nuts against the most popular decks. I guess Exodia Mage probably shouldn't be playing Galaka Crawler. Or Big Priest. Honestly though, I would consider it in Big Priest. This card is so good. I mean, this is basically Big Hunter and I'm playing two Galaka Crawlers. But yeah, anyway, at the core, we're playing Madame Goya and Piranha Launcher, and then we're just playing some big dudes to fetch, playing some things in the early game for consistency, try to dig for combos with double tracking and stitch tracker, and try to crab some kids. Actually, maybe we keep Deathstalker XR against Shaman. It's really, really good. Let's just full keep. Deathstalker Rexar is one of the best cards in my deck against Shaman, and we already have Tracking and Stitch Tracker to try to find other options. I guess we just went Goya. I was actually pretty tempted to take the Swamp King Dread there. Maybe I should have, since I already have two sixes. But Goya can still high roll into Primordial Drake and, uh... Yashiraj. Galaka Crawler, my boy. Alright, let's just take a 1 2 off the board. Oh, Galaka Crawler, my boy. Oh my god, yes, he can't kill it. We get to kill the Flame Tongue Totem. Let's go. Oh my god. Oh man, I love Galaka Crawler so much. Which one do we kill? We've already seen his only charger. So basically, I'm giving him a card to keep two health on my guy. I don't know. I like having the health on my guy, but this is definitely questionable. Oh no, we can't reach it. Unleash the Hounds is so good in this matchup, but it does let me kill the Mana Tide here if I really want. It's so good in the matchup, though. Alright. We're gonna be greedy with our Unleash. I think we definitely want Primordial Drake in this matchup. I could double trade here. 
Or I could take 5 damage to potentially get a better trade next turn. I think I'll eat the damage. Also, if he just goes face, then Deathstalker Rexar makes the trades way better next turn. We have a really, really flexible turn 6. As long as he doesn't do some ridiculous evolution combos here. Oh no, it's happening. Okay, no evolve. We're never gonna kill this Manatide Totem. To be fair though, Flame Tongue Totem might even still be scarier here. Let's go for high main here. We can still pick up some pretty good trades. And uh, holding Rexar for next turn, we can Rexar into Drake, into Drake. Just chain those board clears over and over again. Okay, that certainly could have gone worse. I think. Whatever, I'm just gonna fatigue him at this point, dude. I don't care how many cards you draw. Pretty unlucky. I had four big guys, two small guys, and this was the worst of the two small guys. One in six RNG. Oh, the ticking abomination! That's a good card, huh? Deal five damage to your minions. <laughs> I guess we just kill him with Rexar. Buzzard Unleash. Oh, that's actually good. Maybe Primordial Drake was better than Rexar last turn. I think it probably was. It's still good this turn, though. Dude, Buzzard Unleash is good here. We'll overdraw. Actually, we won't, because we can play this. Welcome to 2014. <laughs> oh man. I think it's slightly better to kill this totem. Because of Flame Tongue Totem positioning. Probably doesn't really matter too much. Barnes is always a high roll here, which is nice. Probably just want to play Primordial Drake, though. Arcane shot that guy. Aya is definitely a strong card to have. Mm, that was the best Barnes target in the deck. I think I'm just playing Drake here. I guess I'll hero power to go along with it. He still has one pirate in the deck, I think, right? Probably just kill that to make his board as small as possible. Okay. That's a bloodlust. That's a strong turn, though. He has 18 damage with a second bloodlust. 
Let's just play Yasharaj while it's still good. I'm dead to Bloodlust plus Jade Lightning here, but I think that's the only thing that kills me. Other than some stupid Evolve into Chargers combo. Oh no, Bloodlust plus this kills me. Wow, we're still losing. Alright, no chargers. Do we have lethal? He's at 19. Yeah, we have 19. <laughs> okay, well. We don't have 19. Oh, this thing has charge, right? That's actually really important here. Okay, so... Does tracking do anything? This goes here, this goes here. Grab goes here, he has a 3-6. Unleash the Hounds doesn't do much. I think tracking's bad. Good Barnes for Stormwind Champion here, but I don't think that really does much. I play an Eagle Horn Bow along with it. Wait, 9, 10, 11. No, we don't have lethal. Oh, go faster. Okay. We picked up a taunt, which is good here. Taunt makes it hard to die. I don't think I missed lethal that turn. But maybe there was some way that Barnes into Stormwind Champ was lethal. Well, that was a clown fiesta of a game. I think I probably could have made some decisions that were a little better than the lines of play I took, but whatever. I think both of these are pretty good. Cat Trick often triggers off of maybe a backstab, maybe a shadow step on Keliseth, and then Eagle Hornbow obviously smacks some dudes down. Honestly, I think we just take the second crab. Card just shits on decks that have pirates. Truth is found in I was just gonna play Cat Trick here, but we need to coin out the bow, I think. Well, I really prefer to hit Captain with this, but a 2-2 patches will also do. Oh, baby. Oh, man. Oh, that feels good. Well, I guess if I used the bow instead of my crab... He wouldn't have been able to make that trade, but the bow just seems so good. I don't really see much of a reason to develop the Piranha Launcher here. Puffer lets me kill Edwin. I think I might just want to try to race him, though. I mean, at the end of the day, we are still a hunter duck with Steady Shot as our hero power. Like, is he going to use his dagger to kill Huffer here? Seems unlikely. Looks like he's going to. Maybe I made a bad call, but I don't know. Oh no, that's bad. Is it bad? Unleash the Hounds is 9 damage right now. What can Barnes pull? Barnes actually high rolls a pretty high percentage of the time here. But what if we Piranha Launcher? Over the next two turns, Piranha Launcher hero power is... 6 damage, he's at 11. Unleash the Hounds is lethal if he has 4 things on board. And Piranha Launcher doesn't allow him to trade anything off. Will he ever choose to just not develop here? Maybe. I wonder. 
Tonight, a tale of glorious Barnes does give him a way to trade off his 1-2, but I think it's also very likely to give me more damage into the Hydra. There's also a very high possibility I'm just dead here, but not really worth playing with that in mind since I can't do anything to stop it. I mean, I could have unleashed the Hounds to kill the Flame Elemental, but I can never win from that position. I just high rolled really hard with Barnes, by the way. I don't know if that was obvious. If I play Unleash the Hounds here, I get four dogs. We can only reliably send three of them into Bitter Tide Hydra. Sometimes this guy does res a hound, though. What else has died? Two Galaka Crawlers. Huffer died. I think Unleash the Hounds is lethal here, like, 50% of the time. Deathstalker Rexar just loses me the game. I mean, Unleash the Hounds is the only play, right? Oh man. That bowman. I think I did need to get one of the chargers. I think it was a 50-50 on the death rattle. 